Uh, my name is Greg Dyke. Uh, yeah, my name is Greg Dyke. I'm associated with uh, Ziva Shinga Yax uh, and, and part of the organizing group for this uh, conference. Um, this is certainly the first GAC hosting conference east of the Mississippi, and maybe we're soft. Have they ever had one out west? on animal hus yak husbandry? Uh, I don't believe so. So this may be the first one in the United States uh, history. So right. You are here for this this moment. And this isn't just about yaks. I really want, want us to be uh, clear on that. Uh, that whereas we're going to talk about yak things, uh, uh, a key part, I think, for the future really is that connection. I mean, yaks, and you know, beef cattle genetically, species-wise, we're all one, separated. I think there's a coming together where everybody can benefit. Uh, the beef industry, as, as maybe yaks, can, can bring things to bear uh, genetically and uh, just sort of working together on, on meat issues and things like that. So this is kind of a time to, to learn uh, and to hear the experimental stuff that they're gonna talk about with the AI program which would certainly impact not only the yak industry, but could really do things with uh, beef. Um, but also to think about you know, what is possible. So uh, let your mind uh, wander in good ways as we, as we do this. Uh, first Thanksgiving is to Morehead State University because they, they gave us this facility to use uh, at no cost. And I mean, it's just a, a great place to be and be able to pull things into the arena and not be out in the cold is a wonderful treat. And so thanks for being there. And I'd just like to quickly introduce you to the, the people who know the stuff. So Dr. Arnold from uh, okay. UK uh, Diagnostic Lab, uh, Dr. Prater from Moorhead State, Jeff, you're here somewhere. Tom Cooler from UK, Dr. Harrelson from, U from MSU, uh, Ted, who's from everywhere, UK, UK and many places, yeah. in in your and your own business. And, and so, yes, and my own business that works for US Yak. Yeah, mm -hmm. works with US Yak. Uh, also, uh, we have a chef who will be here. He's from University of Kentucky. He's a, a faculty there, and he'll be preparing yak meat for you to try and that sort of thing. And we have another chef here by the name of Jesse Brown, who's hiding in the kitchen. And he's got all the other stuff. Is there any vegetarians here? Those options are there as well. So hopefully we have a couple. If you need anything, speak up and we'll move along. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, uh, this is a great bowl of uh, lunch. Uh, <laughs> you didn't name him, did you? Rocket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Here's our schedule. Uh, we're pretty much going to stay on track. Uh, okay, so key thing for this is there's going to be presentations, demonstrations. They're going to be recorded. You'll have access to recordings uh, and that sort of thing in the future. But ask questions. This is uh, you've got some great people to to speak with outside the presentations, but ask during. Because we'll all learn from them. Okay, so. I just want to quickly look at why considering yaks uh, for those who aren't raising yaks and probably some of us who do raise them one every so often when we've got them to. Uh, this is a meat analysis from a grass-fed yak from a couple years ago. Uh, you can see it's a high protein level, low cholesterol, and it has you know, some of the nice things you like to see with omega-3s and the one with acid and that sort of thing. Uh, this is grass fed. If, it, if it's fed on grain, it's going to look different. If it's hybrid, it's going to look different. Uh, you know, one of the things is, you know, well, where does the money come from? These are sample taken from around the U.S. from people who are selling yak meat. And you can see the ground, you know, goes from $8. That's not grass fed, and it's hybrid yak. For one year. Uh, and that's why it's cheaper, uh, but it goes you know, from $10 to $14. Steaks, 
range to say, you know, quite a bit. And here in Kentucky, I guess I'm high priced. Uh, I just figured, well, grab ground meat, I'll just double it for the steaks and the roasts. And people buy it, people like it. Uh, so uh, if there is uh, money, to, you know, available. To, there are two things that are really important. Um, one is, and, and you've got the master of Yak's meat sales, Bob Bossy, back there in the red shirt. Key thing is developing your own, you got to develop a market because, you know, some, I remember the first time I tried to sell Yak meat and I thought it was like a rodent. You know? <laughs> uh, so, one thing is the marketing. The other thing is once you do develop a market, the key thing about Yak's is demand will exceed supply. And so that's a huge issue. And that's, a, that's an issue where people have said, oh, you can do a hybrid, which is what the Kansas people have done, because you can grow them faster. It's not quite the same meat. It's different than beef. It's going to have some of the yak attributes. But there's a niche there. But there's a great need for people to raise yaks and I think cooperatively work at making sure, oh, Bob, you've got a contract with the restaurant. I've got extra. Let's get you the meat. So as we, as we work together, uh, I think that there's real potential there. Uh, all right. So, uh, just some, you know, these, these are the key issues. At least for me, if you take a gap and you haul it off, and all you do is get meat with no bones back, from live weight to what I get back is about 30 to 33 percent. Uh, again, there's no ready, readily available market. People who use the farmer's market, Robert Sissel out in Virginia, he survives off of that. He quit his IT job, he does the farmer's market, makes a living. Supply is the key issue. And one of the other things is uh, yaks are considered exotic by USDA, which means you got to go through a couple extra loops with the slaughterhouses to get USDA approval. The other thing that's not mentioned, I think, is that uh, for the USDA, and this was told me by the people who had the hybrid yak in Kansas, is that uh, if an animal is 39% yak from the USDA point of view, you can sell it as yak. Mm -hmm. Take a picture of both of them, you can see quite a difference. You know, the, uh, the hybrid or the grain fed can you know, have a lot of fat and so on, and the yak may look like it's just deep red. And I've got some in the little freezer up there for you to, if you want to look at it, see what it really looks like. Okay, so that's, you know, the meat is the big thing, only the breeding stock. The other thing that you can do with yak, which is interesting, is they grow an underfiber. Uh, they have the outer hair, and then they grow a, a, a down fiber. And you know, a decent yak, will, its down fiber will be the same quality as catching hair. So there, you know, that has a, a marketing capacity. Out in the West, you comb it up. It, it releases. You don't have to cut it or anything. It releases. And out West, you know, it's getting it early in the spring, right? Yeah. Kentucky, I mean, we're just slow here. <laughs> they, you know, they, well, maybe I'll release some in July or something. So it's, it, it's almost a, a long summer detail, you know, in terms of combing them out and that sort of thing. And at least our experience is you get one to two pounds per yak. And if you keep working them more and more, I think, you know, there's always more to be had if you, can, if you just want to do the work. And you can market it in a variety of ways. Uh, Raw, which is what I've done after a while, is you can sell it for $20 to $60 a pound based on quality and who wants it, the roving and that sort of thing. I think I've got some prices. So this is from Etsy. The roving went for just under $7 an ounce. Uh, yarn, and it usually makes the yak with merino or something, about a 50 50, 50 mix or silk or bamboo. Seemed to be an average of around $39 a skein. Uh, uh, this uh, farm uh, out in the Yacker 2, which is in Michigan, there's a $60 a scale. It was probably de aired, which added to its value. And uh, one place you could buy the wash, it's just wash fiber, and this is an Etsy thing. A kilogram was $180. So there is potential to make money. It's work uh, to call them out. Unless you really train your yak to be real 
friendly and loving, and then people just talk about, you know, combing them out in the field. Mind your own squeeze you. Uh, the other thing with yaks that you could do, and uh, some people have done in Alaska and other places, is yaks are traditionally pack animals in Tibet. They're the jeep of the country, um, and sort of like the buffalo of the culture, but uh, as pack animals, but also for uh, agritourism, for trekking and that sort of thing. And you can go online and see people trekking Europe with these yaks, carrying all their stuff. You could do it in Alaska, but you know, in Kentucky you've got the Sheltoe Trail, which is hundreds of miles. There's no reason you, know, you couldn't do it there as well. Um, so that you know, that's another economic possibility. Uh, in terms of environmental considerations and things like that, they have less forage consumption. You can finish them entirely on grass or hay. Females are half the size of bulls. So you don't have a thousand pound female, you get a thousand pound meat animal out of it. Um, cold tolerant. And uh, one of the interesting things is that you know you, you, we have to do uh, water management reports and things like that. And uh, so one of the things they, they always are interested in is how you handle the manure. Well, at least our experience is the yaks will wander, so this is more, much more even distribution. So you're not dealing with these big piles of manure every which way, which makes it easier. Uh, in terms of inputs, at least from my experience, you know, give us something good to eat, grass and hay, water, that's it. Fencing, kind of typical woven wire or whatever. They're not big fence testers. But you need some kind of management thing to squeak, well, mine is squeak, shoot, and some corrals and that kind of thing just for handling. Uh, shelter, I was told to build shelters from the sun and the rain, and the, and the bulls like to sleep under it, and the cows just sleep everywhere else. Uh, so anything I build that looks like it would be nice and like a bed, the bulls take. Uh, vaccinations, we do a couple things like ultra back and try and pretend type deals. In our area, some people don't do any. Trace mineral supplements, key thing. And Dr. Arnold, I'm sure, will have a few words on that. That's, it's about health, it's about growth. I had a bull, and I gave it a bunch of copper, and it changed its hair color. Went from brown to black. You're looking different. Uh, Did it go back to brown, or did it stay? No, it stayed, it stayed. I used the copper shore, the and then the, I, I, what I find, and maybe other yak people do, is the key thing to yak help is just watch your herd. If somebody looks like they've got the flu, deal with it. You, know? um, you, just, you just need to just watch them and, and just see, that, look for changes. And then good genetic based breeding is, is critical because the yaks come from such a small gene pool and tentacle. I'm sure we'll hit on that, uh, that you can end up uh, having negative impacts by, by that breeding. So that's, that's it. Let's get the good people up, <laughs> Michelle.